everything is wearisome beyond description. No matter how much we see, we are never satisfied. No matter how much we hear, we are not content. you are watching and uh, I, I just want to start off with a question and the question is do you know what a Bergen is yeah a Bergen uh, if you don't know Bergens are uh, the miserable creatures that were featured in uh, the original movie trolls from a few years back me and my kids love to watch trolls and uh, the Bergens, if you don't know about them, they live every day of their lives with a craving just to be happy. All they want is to be happy. And uh, they wrongly think that what will make them happy is eating one of those little tiny creatures called trolls. The Bergens get up in the morning and they mope around all depressed and, and sad with a craving. Uh, um, and they say things like, uh, make me happy. And I just want to be happy. And I just want to tell you that that's actually you. <laughs> and that's me. Uh, we were born Bergens. Waking up every morning silently screaming, world, make me happy. And friends, make me happy. And phone, make me happy. And food, make me happy. And social media, make me happy. And beach, make me happy. And weekends, make me happy. And world, make me happy. We are all born Bergens since Genesis chapter 3, when our first parents, Adam and Eve, sinned and disobeyed God. Sin entered the world and sin entered our hearts. And because of our own sin, listen to God's word in Ecclesiastes 1.8. This is a tragic conclusion to all of life. It says, quote, all things are exhausting. Means they end up draining you. You end up drooling for the next thing. That's what it means. All things are exhausting, but man is not able to tell. It's, it's basically saying we're not able to tell that this stuff is leaving us drooling and it doesn't satisfy. It says the eye is not satisfied with seeing no matter what you see, no matter what screens you put in front of your eyes. And uh, nor is the ear filled with hearing new songs, new music, new songs, new this, new that. We are not satisfied. We're Bergens. Sin has entered into our lives and our world, and we are not satisfied. And really, the entire book of Ecclesiastes teaches us that real happiness cannot be found on earth. And you know what? Here we are, right? In 2020, doing a virtual conference because of some of the challenges of this uh, year. No pun intended. Challenge conference, right? Yeah, challenge conference. We've been facing some challenges in 2020. The year of Rona disease, the year of racial divisions. We are reminded again that real happiness cannot be found here on this earth. So I want to let King Solomon, uh, he's actually a historic person. He was the wealthiest man who ever lived. I want to let him take the mic, all right? And I want him to shout to us if he had, if this was a rap song, he would be dropping some bars. If what he said in Ecclesiastes 2 was a rap song, it would be titled, Everything is Empty in This Fake World. That's what it would be called because that's what he knew. He knew what he was talking about. He had it all and he tried it all, literally. And so uh, let's just go through some of 
Solomon's empty pursuits in Ecclesiastes chapter two and listen to God's word. Number one, empty pursuit. Solomon said it was laughter. He went after laughter. Ecclesiastes 2.2, 2, he says, I said of laughter, it is mad. So he's going on a chase to be happy, to be satisfied in this empty, broken world. And his first stop is laughter. He's just like, I'm just going to try to laugh as much as I can. And, and I want to be funny and I want to be around hilarious people who can make me laugh. And, and you are like that and I'm like that. So many of us are like that. God created us for good times before sin entered the world. Just read Genesis chapter one, Genesis chapter two. Everything was good for the taste and good for the eyes. He wanted us to have a good time and laughing is good. I hope you laugh a lot. Um, as a matter of fact, you can laugh right now. Why don't you take a laugh break, right? Just, <laughs> just go ahead and laugh. <laughs> it's, good, it's good to laugh. Ecclesiastes three uh, verse four actually says that there is a quote, Time to laugh. But Solomon is saying that laughter in, his, in and of itself is empty. You and I were not created to get our ultimate happiness from laughing with friends or laughing at funny movies or funny YouTube videos. It's not, it's not in laughter. But then number two, uh, he says empty, empty pursuit number two is drinking. Can you say that? We can have a little conversation, even though it's virtual. Go ahead and say drinking. All right. Good. Drinking. Verse three, he says, I search with my heart how to cheer my body with wine. Wine. Solomon's pursuing. He's got all this money. He's got all this stuff. He's saying I, I, it wasn't laughter. I'm going to just try to drink. I'm going to drink alcohol until I get, quote unquote, cheerful, really happy. Drunk. And some of you know what Solomon is after, right? But be warned, because getting drunk is empty and it can also be deadly. One of my homies, one of my friends from back in Houston, Texas, named Casey, he wrote a book. Uh, and uh, this book really detailed his pursuit of being happy through drinking. Uh, when he was about 16 years old, he got drunk at a party. He got upset. He pulled out his car and he ran over his friend and killed him. Look, y'all, drinking is not the way to happiness. It could be deadly. But number three, number three, he says, uh, uh, empty pursuit number three, self-accomplishments. Can you just say that? Self-accomplishments. Yeah, self-accomplishments. Uh, verses four through six, he says the, 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 the two words I made Three times. He says, I made gardens. I made parks. I made, I made, I made. He tried to find happiness in what he accomplished. He tried to find happiness in his own ability. He tried to find happiness in his performance so that people would take notice and say, oh, look at that boy Solomon. Oh, he's cool, man. He's, he's good. He's good. He's, he's impressive. We want to be around him. He wanted people to lift him up. And let's just be honest, it feels good, don't it? it? It feels good to, for people to see our abilities, to see our talents, to see our this and see our that and pat us on the back and lift us up. Some of you may be like, you know, I made good grades, you know, and, or, or I made varsity, or I did this, or I can do that, or I play this, or I won that. And that's good, but please realize that self-accomplishments never satisfy the deepest places of your heart. Number four. Number four, empty pursuit number four, people. Can y'all just shout out people? Yeah, people. This is crazy because in verse seven, Solomon said, I bought male and female servants. So he got some servants. Paid, these were paid day workers. And so Solomon thought, man, I know what I need. It's not drinking. It's not laughter. It's not self-accomplishments. It's, it's people. I need people in my life. I need friends in my life. I need people to make me happy. And many of you think that people can make you happy. Getting friends to like you. Getting friends to laugh at your jokes. Getting friends to look at you. Girls getting uh, uh, guys to look at you. Guys trying to get, you know, them guns, right, blah, blah, you know, trying to get the ladies to look at you. Look, look, watch this. I saw a survey, and, and a lot of surveys show that the shallow online friendships, people trying to get friends to 
like them and love them. The shallow online friendships of this social media era are serving to make us the loneliest generation in history. All these attempts at trying to get people to, to like us and follow us and, 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 and be our friends often lead to emptiness, which so many times lead to teen suicide. Listen, only God can fill that relational hole in your heart. Look, your family and friends are good gifts. Don't get me wrong. Don't get it twisted. Your family and friends are good gifts but they make bad substitutes for God. Empty pursuit number five is stuff. Can you just say stuff? Yeah, stuff. Verse seven, he says, I also had great possessions. He had a lot of stuff. I mean, this dude had more stuff than anybody has ever had in history. Uh, I'm reminded of uh, uh, Ariana Grande. I know y'all know that name, Ariana Grande. Um, and one of her songs that was real popular last year, she says, quote, happiness is the same price as red bottoms. Really? She's basically saying red bottom shoes, $700 shoes, $800 shoes, $2,000, $5,000 shoes. This woman is one of the most powerful voices in teenage culture, and she's telling you, that the way to happiness is to get you some red bottom shoes. This is emptiness, y'all. I pray that you see this. Ariana said that, but listen to what King Jesus said, the one who made Ariana, the one who made the leather and the plastic from the mountains and materials that the red bottom shoes even come from. Jesus said, what good is it to get all of this stuff if you die and lose your soul? Empty pursuit number six. Empty pursuit number six. Money. Can you say money? Money. Verse eight. Solomon says, quote, I also gathered silver and gold and treasure. So this man, like you and me, a born Bergen, trying to look all over this broken world for happiness and satisfaction and pleasure and peace, and he says, I got to turn to my money. Look, do some study. Solomon was so rich, richest man who ever lived. He would make Jeff Bezos, the, the, the CEO of Amazon, this billionaire Jeff Bezos, he would make Jeff Bezos seem poor. And yet he said it wasn't in money. One of the oldest, most deceptive lies from the devil, from the hood where I live at in the inner city to the suburbs where a lot of y'all live or, or, or the rural uh, places or wherever we live all over the world. One of the biggest lies of the devil is that money will make you secure and happy. My question is, you might be a ninth grader. You might be 17. You might be a youth worker. You might even be a parent. Listen. Are you believing that lie? Because Jesus Christ, the one who made you and me, he says in Matthew 6, you can't serve and worship and pursue money and God. You cannot do that. Wake up from that lie. Empty pursuit number seven, entertainment. Can you say entertainment? See, some of y'all thought that the Bible was not you know, relevant for right here and right now. This could be written right now in 2020. This man was looking for entertainment just like you and you and me for, for satisfaction. Uh, look at verse 8. Verse 8 says, he's like, I got singers. That's what it says. He says, I got me some singers. Now that's entertainment. And that's rich right there. Now most of us ordinary people, when we look for entertainment, we're just like, I got me uh, an iPad. Yeah, I got an iPad for entertainment. But Solomon's like, I'm so rich. I got me some singers. Like, I literally bought me some human beings to entertain me. Okay, it's time. I own you, human being. It's time for you to sing. It's time for you to dance. He got these human beings. He was so hungry and thirsty to be happy and satisfied. He's reaching for entertainment. 
Makes me think about a time when I first started reading the Bible and I would read through the Old Testament and, and I would and I would see these people worshiping golden calves. Right. I'm like, how could these stupid people worship golden calves? And guess what? Behold, the golden calf. The golden calf of our day. We look for entertainment on our phones. Stop worshiping a shiny rectangle God. Kempton, put them down. We were not made for them. Yes, we can use them. Yes, they can be fun. But it's gone too far. Why? Because we are searching for happiness. In all the wrong places. A few more. A few more. He, he's going after entertainment. He's going after drinking. He's going after self confidence And then he's going after sex. Should have known that was coming. It ain't new that you are a sexual being and that you lust and you, you go after sexual things like me. This is Solomon's story. Verse 8, it says, I got many concubines. It says, I got me some concubines. It's like, what? I don't really use that much. You don't hear people going after, you know, hey, man, I got me some concubines, man. I don't know about you, but you got you some concubines. Now, what are concubines? These are women, right? Women that he was with that were not his wife. Concubines represents any kind of sexual expression or experience outside of marriage between a man and a woman. And so that means... Um, for those of you who are listening and, and, and you are out there, you're trying to pursue sex to satisfy you, make you excited, thinking that it's fun outside of marriage before God. And it is empty and it's harmful, whether it's dry sex, whether it's oral sex, whether it's heterosex, whether it's same sex. Uh, 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 whether it's self-sex, masturbation, pornography. Listen, it's not new. You're going after these things because you're trying to satisfy something much deeper in your heart. It does not satisfy. It dishonors God and it will destroy your life. And if that's you and you're caught, then come clean. Come before God. The Lord Jesus Christ, he rescues people. From that sexual bondage. Believe me, I know. Talk to your parents. Talk to your youth leader. Because sexual sin is a very deceptive uh, 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 trap. But, but he says uh, uh, a few more. Um, empty pursuit number nine. Popularity. Can you say popularity? Verse nine, he says, so I became great and surpassed them all. He's like, I, everybody around me, I was the most popular dude in town. He was the king. He was on top. He had all the riches. He had all the wisdom. He was the most, he was the wisest man who ever lived. He was like, everybody loves to see me coming in. And that's probably you. You want to be popular. We all want to be known. We all want to be uh, uh, somewhere down inside. At least most of us want to be the next uh, 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 social media superstar that goes viral. Look, that's empty. It's empty. And then lastly, uh, empty pursuit number 10, a hard work ethic. Some of you are like, you know what? I'm not trying to be popular. I'm, I'm, I'm not pursuing sex uh, outside of marriage. I, you know what? I'm not trying to drink. I'm not trying to use entertainment. I'm not, he said, I'm a good Christian kid. I love the Lord. And I just work hard. And I play hard. And I study hard. And, and I'm from the Johnsons. And we were raised to, to be not lazy, but hard worker. And, and Solomon said the same thing. He says, I considered all of my hands had done and the hard work that I expended and the energy in verse 11 of chapter 2. And he says, it's all empty. Whether you're doing immoral, wicked, idolatrous stuff or whether you're doing good, moral, religious stuff, it's all empty on this planet of racism and injustice, on this planet of COVID-19, on this planet where we love people more than God and we worship our rectangle phones, on this planet it's all empty. And so the, 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 the question is, 
Why do we search for these things? Why did Solomon search for these things? Why are you watching me and understanding and you know that you search for these things as well? Well, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 gives us the answer. It says, because God has placed eternity in your heart and my heart. That means when he created you in your mother's womb, he put a hole in your heart that only a God like him, the only God, the eternal God, could fill. You have a God-shaped hole in your heart. And everything else from phones to Snapchat to friends just goes right down. Pornography and masturbation and laughter. You have a God-shaped hole in your heart. Listen, God made us for himself, and we remain empty until we get back to him. I want to leave you with an illustration that might be helpful. I don't know if you like fish. I like fish, and I actually got a fish, all right? And so this, this is my friend, Floppy, all right? Say what's up to Floppy. Floppy. Um, now, let me ask you a question. Floppy belongs in the ocean. Uh, and so with me getting Floppy out of the ocean, let me ask you, what is going to satisfy Floppy since I got him out of the ocean and Floppy is pretty much dying? Well, I tell you what, um, what if I got Floppy a Snapchat account? Guess what? Floppy would still be dying. What, what if I got Floppy some beer? How about some beer? Yeah, I'm going to get you some beer, Floppy. He's still going to be dying. Now what? I, I, I'm going to put Floppy right here. What if I got Floppy some money? Here you go, Floppy. Put that in your mouth, Floppy, right there. He'd still be dying. Okay, it's kind of legalized now in some places. So what, what if I got Floppy some weed? Some marijuana, I mean medical, mar medical for, for, for his eyes. Guess what? Floppy would still be dying. But I know what. What if I got Floppy a girlfriend, a female Floppy? And, 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 and kind of, yeah, I got you a girl now, Floppy. Guess what? Floppy would still be dying. Why? Because Floppy was made not for money. Floppy was made to live and thrive not on a computer, not with weed, not with alcohol. Floppy was made to be put back into the ocean and until somebody outside of Floppy, until somebody outside of this fish takes him and puts him back into where he was created, he will be on hospice care just trying to get as comfortable as possible while he dies. Guess what? The fish is you. The fish is me. Ever since we've sinned, we've been outside of our relationship with God. We were made to live and thrive and enjoy God. We were made to know and love God. But since sin came into the world, God has been removed from us. We've been taken away from the ocean of God, and now we're searching for all these different pursuits while we breathe to death. What do we need? We need someone outside of ourselves. We need Jesus Christ to come and bring us back to the ocean of God. And guess what? That is what he did. First Peter 3.18 says, Jesus Christ suffered once for sin, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring us to God. He bled to bring us to God. He screamed out under God's anger on the cross to bring us to God. He bled to bring us to God. He rose from the dead to bring us to God so that we would enjoy the ocean of the presence of the joy of God. So I want you to know this. Whoever you are, wherever you're watching, you weren't made for here. You were made for him. 
So surrender to this Jesus. Pursue him. And all these other good gifts that we talked about that Solomon pursued will be put in the right perspective. And you will know a joy and a peace and a pleasure that you were created to know back in the ocean of God through Jesus Christ. And so, Father, thank you for sending your son to seek us, to pursue us while we were pursuing everything else so that he would bring us through the bloody cross back into the ocean of God so that we would enjoy you now and forever. Lord, may this be our blessing and our experience from the youngest to the oldest watching. Lord, thank you. Thank you for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen.